Good morning, everyone. My name is Christian Gallant, and I'm the Divisional IMIT Officer for H Division RCMP. Today, we will be providing a video demonstration of our computer-aided dispatch system, commonly known as KIDS, and the mobile workstation application that interacts with that system, commonly known as SAM. During our video presentation, you will see the interaction between the members in the police vehicles and the dispatchers located in the OCC. After the video demonstration, we will provide an overview of all of the technical components that make up the mobile workstations inside of our police vehicles. Today I'll be uh, starting my shift uh, in patrol unit ID 10 Zulu 99. I'll log into the uh, MWS in my care. Uh, portable ID MCP02. Working at a, a HQ district today. So putting in my portable ID, my telephone number, uh, and some items that I'm carrying today, CW and as well as C8, and uh, log in. And then I would 10 8, 10 -8 myself. I'll show it on available for calls. Okay, at the dispatch center, we'll see 10 Zulu 99 show up on our board. We'll acknowledge him on the radio. And we will go through, look at his details. I'm going to find his resources, find his name, and we're going to edit. I'm going to put in temporary roles, his CEW. and a C8 carbine, click OK, click OK again. So those temporary roles are now attached to him. And I'll delete what he wrote there so nobody else will try to add them again. And I will update my patrol unit. So by adding C8 and CEW in as a temporary role, if he's attached to a file, and we are looking for somebody who has a CEW, for instance, who's attached to that file. We can bring up a file and use the find function and search for CEW. I will be creating a file here. The address is going to be our headquarters. I'm going to post this file. Once I post, a, a dispatcher will get that interactive incidents right here. I will open that one up. We'll air on the radio that there's a file for that area. And at 10 Zulu 99 wants that file, we'll attach him to it. When we create that file, it uh, generates some alerts. So. This address has an AOI attached, meaning an address of interest. So we would open that up and see that it's an address of interest at that address. It's also because it's a school lockdown file that I created, we get the school incidents standard operating procedure attached to that as a TAC plan. So when I open that up, that brings up our standard operating procedure at the OCC when dealing with school incidents. Also, we've got school response codes attached to that. So I would open that up and you would get a list of the response codes. You also have a link here to our safe plans. We have safe plans for the schools in the province. We would click on that and then we could locate that school.
Also, we have a premise pack plan here for multi-member response. We click that and get the details on that. Finally, attached to this is all other files created in KIDS that was a that was attached to that address. We can open them up and get the details on any previous files. And the care uh, come up to me as I was 1071, meaning I'm dispatched the call. If I'm going to accept the call or don't want to go 17, I'll click on F5, which changes me to 17. And as you can hear, it brings up that I'm 1017 on the, on the kid side as well. You'll see over here, 10199 is now 1017 for that address. Also, if we were looking, as mentioned before, if we were, we were looking for somebody attached to that file who has a CEW, we would touch CEW into the find feature. This would bring up all members in the province who have a CEW. Also, we could type in carbine, find out all members in the province who have a carbine, if they're logged into an MWS with it attached. All right, on, my, uh, on the MWS, if I'm going to the call and I'm not familiar with calling, bring the map up. Uh, it's going to show me that the star is where I'm dispatched to, and you can see where I'm 1017 uh, for one minute on the map there. And that's where I'm heading. If I open up here on my side, I see he's 1017 as well. I can see that in my control unit list, but if I open it up, I get a little more detail. 1017 brings with it a 30-minute timer. After 30 minutes, we would check on them. Well, we have a file open. We have uh, an activity log. We scroll to the bottom of the activity log. This is when the file began. It'll show everything that happened and any benchmarks. So this is when the incident was started, when it was created, when it was posted. If we query a person, it'll note it there and the attachment will be up here. Uh, also, any other events we can type in or any benchmarks we can put in. So if I'm up here, I see 10 Zulu 99 is attached. He went 17, then he went 23. I can also say um, one in custody, if I hear that on the radio. Uh, I can also say, use a benchmark here, for instance, and say we call a guard or over here, I can say we call an ambulance and I can click and it shows up here. Or if we needed to call a tow truck, I could say Smith's towing and then click on tow and you'll see Smith's towing is right here. As well, you'll see every now and then an entry like that that shows transfer to pros. This file is updated every now and then and sent to our RMS a records management system, which is pros. So everything we type in here goes there. Also, everything that shows up here goes to the MWS. For the MWS side, I would see every every event log, every benchmark that's put in there, I get a, I get a copy of it. So there's a, an update while we're on our way to a call. Uh, for example, I would get in here, uh, would be in here. But I see everything exactly as Brian was typing it on, on the cute side. But we can also say if one of the call takers, I'm a dispatcher in this case, I've dispatched the file and I'm monitoring and talking to the members on the road via the radio. Uh, if the call takers were to make an update, it would pop up here. And anything that pops up new for me will show up in highlighted in green. So if there is an update to the file that the call takers get on the phone, let's say for instance, there is a, another person involved in the file, they can say, they can say um, Joan Smith just showed up on scene, and I'll see that Joan Smith showed up on scene. And also the members on the road will see the same thing on the MWS. All right, so now I've arrived at the, arrived at the call. Mark myself uh, 1023. And you'll see over here, his status has changed to 1023 at, the a at that address. If I open it up, where it's a school lockdown, it's a five minute timer. Uh, other files with other Priorities may have a 15-minute timer. Depending on the priority of the file, the timer will change. So, for instance, if I'm out of my car and uh, I want to update the OCC without keying up on the radio for whatever reason, uh, I can update my status. Uh, so I'm 23 there now, saying I'm at the uh, at the call. I can uh, update my status to 108 
uh, find a 10-8 uh, in the statuses here that are, that are, that are included. You hit select, and you can see that it updates my MWS 10-8, and then also with the Brian here. Yeah, and you'll also see here 10 Zulu 99 is now 10 8, and that will have cleared them from the file. We'll do some internal messaging now. Internal messaging is from our workstations at the OCC to any workstation, RCMP workstation in the province, as well as all the cars on the road. So if I want to send an internal message to 10 Zulu 99, I can send my message 10 Zulu 99. I would send that message to his MWS. You can see on the MWS there, the message pops up from uh, Brian there. I can reply back just by simply hitting insert, opens up another screen. I can uh, type the message and reply to it. You'll see on this side, There'll be a message there. I'll open it up and I'll get that message. So if I'm not going to send a message to a colleague who's working uh, anywhere in the province for that matter, I can uh, simply open up a message, internal message F6, type in the car that he's in today, 16 Bravo 02. So there he replied back to me. He's at the Sherbrooke detachment. I can send a message to, if I wanted to send it globally or district wide, I can send it to Colchester County or East Hants or whatever, and that'll go to every car that's logged in the MWS uh, in that district. We have some other functions of our internal messaging. We can send messages to multiple workstations at the same time. We can send a message to jurisdictions, all the units working in a jurisdiction. So if I were to say CC for Colchester County, that would send to all of those. We can also send to various user-defined groups we've entered. We can send something to the OCC, and all the OCC operators will get it. Or we can send something globally. Global will get to any workstation that's turned on in the province, all the MWSs that are on in the province. So I send that message to the province. I'm going to make this a priority message. I'll click and hit send. That message will have gone to every car in the province. If I want to send a priority message to Constable Foster's car, I can do the same thing. pops up right away. It's the first thing that shows up. Um, and normally, in the, if I was in the car, there would be a, a dinging noise as well. So, thank you, David. I can, I can reply to that. So, I got the message there from 10 Zulu 99. Oh, okay. Also, we have the ability to send external messages. We can send to any workstation in the country that has a ORI or any agency in the country that has an ORI. And we also have several uh, preloaded options. We can send to all PDs in Nova Scotia. So I would type a message to all PDs in Nova Scotia. I 
I would say H division OCC. If I were to click send, it would go to all the PDs in Nova Scotia. Likewise, if I were to send another external message, I could also send to all our CMP detachments in Nova Scotia. So each detachment itself would get them. Same thing, hit send, it would go to all of those. We have a critical incident group that we can send to. So this critical incident group would send to all PDs in Nova Scotia and all our CMP detachments in Nova Scotia, as well as the OCCs in J Division, New Brunswick, Kodiak, New Brunswick, L Division, PEI, and they in turn would send out the message to all of their local detachments. If I'm working, uh, being a supervisor on shift uh, during this during this day, and wanted to find out uh, where the members are at, uh, needing them to go somewhere, I can I can run a query on the MWS monitor PU stat and type in the attachment code. I'll type in Colchester because that's where I work at, it, and hit fetch. It's going to give me the status of all the all the members that are currently logged in today in Colchester. And then anybody that's logged into the MWS, I can click on monitor and map and uh, be able to find out where they're situated. Now, if I was actually in a car that was moving, um, my car would move on the map uh, and the other cars are static unless I run that uh, query again. But you can uh, pull it up to a 10 kilometer radius here. So there you can see the cars 5 Bravo 5, uh, 41 Bravo 2, probably more cars underneath 41 Bravo 2 because they're uh, currently at the detachment on Victor Road. So on the kids side, I can do much the same thing. If I highlight 5 Bravo 5 and hit a key, I can see where he is on the map. I can zoom in and out. Uh, I can watch any car as it's moving. It will update every now and then and you'll see it move, moving down the road. I can also see any addresses that are there, and there are various layer functions that I have that I can turn on and off, building footprints, water features, fire stations as well. If I'm looking, watching 5 Bravo 5, as you would have seen just move a little bit, I can click Enter and get their GPS location right here. So they're going southeast on Main Street. There's a Latin along. GPS coordinates, and he's moving at 28 kilometers an hour. We need to add a photo that the members on the road can see from their MWS. I go into what we call WebView Bulletins, click Add. I could send to, I would want to send to Halifax Agency. By doing that, that would send to everybody in Halifax Agency, or I could be more specific and send to a district. This would be Anaganish District. But for now, I think we'll stick with Halifax Agency so everyone would see it. We can make this a high priority. Change the type. The various types here. I'm going to change to Bolo, Bolf. I could say Bolo John Smith. Set an expiry. We'll set next week for now. Pod John Smith. And it's date of birth in the body and any other details I might want to add. Then I could choose a file from my computer. I'm going to choose a, a photo. And then I could just click add, save at the top and that will add that picture. Uh, I'll show you one that we already have added here. I'll go back into WebView and Bulletins. There's one right here, Bolo. If I open up. Here I have all the details. If I click on the image, it makes it larger. Over the MWS is if I was sitting in a car and we'll get a, uh, an update from the OCC saying that they've just added a photograph of John Smith or whichever photo they've added. I click on uh, F9 uh, for more and F3 for the web, which opens up the same thing, web view. 
I'm going to drop down, go to Boltons, and the testing image. Scroll down, I'll see it, and I can click on it and pops up. So, great way to be able to send a photo quickly to all members that are on the road. All right, so if I'm uh, on the road on patrol today and I'm going to stop a car, I've activated my emergency equipment, pulled in, pulled in behind the car, going to go 1011 to uh, let the OCC know that I'm now stopped with a car. F5 for road, insert my uh, license plate for the vehicle, and then 1011 to indicate that I'm out of the vehicle or I have a vehicle stopped and I'm getting out of the vehicle to uh, make contact. And on my side, I see 10 Zulu 99. We'll have uh, turn red. There was a high priority notification there. I would open. I would see that he ran Echo 039. So I would acknowledge his 1011 on a radio. He would give me more details. So once he gave me details, I could say, okay, he's 1011 on Main Street. And that 039 is a black Mazda 3. And I could say four occupants. I would change his timer to three minutes rather than one. And I would run a query on that plate down here. Once I click do that, I get the queries on this side here. It shows me the details on the vehicle and the registered owner of the vehicle. And it will give me queries related to that registered owner. All right, so I'm on patrol in the car, and I uh, I'm at a at an incident when I wanted to uh, check on somebody, so we can do, do a CPIC query. Uh, do an F3. I want to check a person, vehicle, whichever one here I wanted to do. Uh, just do it. John Smith, and then I then I would hit send, and that would give me give me any details that I need. Uh, come back with uh, his 20. It would automatically run his 29 CI for me. Um, CFRO, if I checked off the box and, and give me any uh, any hits back through that. Um, we can also do PSP, which runs uh, other agencies that aren't um, on pros or, or PAT system. Um, a person review, if I can check somebody such as somebody that's uh, in the Halifax uh, regional municipality that lives there that wouldn't necessarily be on our system, but maybe on their system, I can do it here and, and click send here and if there's any hits that come back it would give me a, a big uh, results page and then you can further go into that. So outside of that, um, the MWS uh, is just like you're sitting at your computer or in your office. Um, I can go to the desktop, I can bring up Jen, I can uh, query, uh, this is Jen is the uh, motor vehicle branch uh, or the court system for the province. Um, I can easily run a run a plate here. Uh, give me the plate number. Um, if I'm here, all the details on the on the plate. Um, here I can run uh, people for any orders that thrown, any probation orders, any warrants, such like that. That's out of the province of Nova Scotia as well. I would get that. And then if I was uh, wanting to to uh, pat or the equivalent to pros, um, I can bring it up and it's right on my desktop, so no different as so if I'm sitting at my desk. I can do that all through here. This is the mobile workstation uh, that's used by the members to interface um, using the SAM application with our computer-aided dispatch as well as RMS and many other operational applications. Um, here we have the card reader that the members use to scan a driver's license and look up information. And here in the armrest, we have a printer that's used to by the members to print summary offense tickets. This is the Sierra Wireless AirLink RV50 cellular modem. Uh, this modem connects the vehicle via the cellular network to our mobile wireless infrastructure. On the back side of the modem, there are two external connectors that connect to the antennas located on the roof of the vehicle. One antenna carries the cellular information and the other uh, carries the GPS location for the vehicle. Also on the back side of the modem is an RJ45 connector 
This is used to connect an Ethernet cable from the modem to the mobile workstation, also located inside of the vehicle. This is the uh, GPS antenna. Um, this obtains the GPS signal from the satellite, and then it feeds that down into the cellular modem. This is the cellular antenna. So this is a separate antenna that obtains the cellular signal and feeds it down into the same modem. We hope that our video presentation has contained valuable information in relation to the computer-aided dispatch system used by the RCMP. In closing, I would like to discuss some of the benefits of the KIDS application, as well as some of the enhancements that have been implemented and are being worked on by the RCMP. The KIDS application is used within all divisions in the RCMP, with the exception of E-Division, which is British Columbia, and inside of Halifax District. Halifax District members are using the Versadex application as they are dispatched by IES. Within the KIDS application, we have recently implemented what is known as a regional map. This means that OCC dispatchers within New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and PEI all utilize the same map within their CAD application. This means that dispatchers are able to view members as they travel throughout the Atlantic region. This is invaluable during uh, a multi-agency response or when members are traveling for other purposes. In addition, the RCMP is currently working to implement what is known as super agency inside of the KIDS application. Super agency will allow our OCC dispatchers to have access to occurrence-related data from the three provinces. This will greatly enhance the ability for them to support our members um, when responding to another province and will enhance officer safety. Recently, the RCMP has implemented Radiolink inside of the computer aid dispatch application. Radiolink allows for members to update their status information from their portable radio. Doing so will reduce the amount of voice traffic over the network and again will enhance the response time during an emergency situation. Finally, the RCMP is currently working with Bell Mobility, Motorola, the province of New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and PEI on the implementation of P25 location services. When implemented, P25 location services will allow for valuable GPS data to be transmitted when members hit their ERTT button on their portable radio. In addition, if a member is not responding to a request from the OCC, the OCC member will be able to ping that member's GPS location, which will allow for the RCMP to send resources if required. This again will enhance officer safety um, within our members.